Let me give you an example of why muscle is boring. Consider the beautiful but lowly muscles that live in your feet and are critical to standing, walking, and more. How far are they from your brain? Four, five, six feet or more? Yet there are only three motor neuron cells between those foot muscles and your brain. Three cells. The last one stretches tenuously from the base of your spine to your foot. Three long, thin, fragile cells connect small bundles of muscle cells to your brain. That's what allows your foot to move. Think about what we ask of one of these cells as we hop, skip, and jump through life. Fortunately, these cells are protected and nourished by the structures we call nerves. But have you ever thought about how your nerves are constructed? We know the heart of the nervous system are nerve cells or neurons, but have you considered these are sensitive structures that need to be nurtured and protected during movement, but also be able to do their job? So how does that, how does that happen? Nerves are constructed in a similar manner to a bungee cord. While a single elastic fiber is weak and vulnerable, a bundle covered in protective material become strong and resilient. Nerves are made of bundles of neurons encased in elastic connective tissue along with blood vessels and other structures to nourish the cells and remove wastes. This composition allows them to support and survive vigorous movements. However, things can go wrong and these structures can lose their ability to move well, both inside the nerve and the entire nerve moving through the body. Let's apply the pamper, bless, and said principles to further explore our own bodies. There are movements called nerve slides or glides that are used both to test and improve nerve movement throughout the body. While we can name the nerves these movements try to target, we're not going to do that here as the names are not important to our lesson. We're going to explore these movements with our basic principles so you can identify where your body might deserve special attention. Here's a quick reminder of the PAMPER, BLESS, and SAID acronyms. These are explained deeper in previous videos and reviewed later in this video, so don't panic if they don't make complete sense yet. The movement you are watching is called the slump test, and it progressively stresses nerves from the spinal cord to the extremities, especially in the lower body. We'll explore other movements later, but let's focus on this one first. It can be form, performed in many different ways, but let's explore some basics. First, tension is added to or removed from the nerves one small slow move at a time, generally from the center of the body to the extremities. Second, when a nerve is stressed, you might feel pain, tingling, pins or needles, or other symptoms. We don't want to go that far. We want to sense that tension before the symptoms get more severe. Third, we typically want to compare one side to the other to see if what we are experiencing is the same on both sides. We will typically have a side that needs more attention than the other, indicating a potential or current issue with that side. Fourth, once we're aware of our limits and where we want to focus, we can consistently use the same movements to improve and balance our body via the said principle. Over time, the body will adapt to better accommodate the specific movements we consistently perform. One of our favorite glides addresses the lower body using a strap to control our movements, allowing us to identify and work through the sticking points where we actively tense muscle. Note that this looks like stretching, and you can call it stretching if that helps you. But we are not trying to mechanically pull muscle or fascia fibers apart. We are trying to identify areas where tension increases and get the nervous system to change over time 
by consistently and painlessly moving into those limited positions. Note that while you might see small improvements within a session, it takes patience and consistent effort over time to see lasting and dramatic changes. You might experience some temporary setbacks, especially if you push too far into the discomfort or pain. The key is consistency over time to let the body adapt via the set principle. Ideally, you'll learn to enjoy pamper movements and you'll start naturally evolving movements of your own as your body enjoys moving more. Nerve glides require applying movement awareness and play to explore the effects of simple movements on the nervous system, which is to say nerve glides are a great example of movements that embrace the pamper principles. The key is to pay close attention to what you feel and use that information to play with small, simple movements, exploring where you experience issues. While this video focuses on specific nerve glides, most every movement helps your nerves move better, receive nourishment, and get rid of wastes. In other words, they help you maintain healthy nerves. Nerve glides embrace the said principle of specific adaptation to impose demands. If we use nerve glides consistently for a period of time, our bodies will adapt and allow us to move more comfortably into those positions. Nerve glides are a great opportunity to also apply the BLESS principles of breathing, lengthening, efficient efforts, symmetry, and stabilizing with strength. Breathe slowly for several breaths in each position to help you feel the sensations associated with the position. Lengthen appropriately to help open up space to move and tensen, tension the tissues. Apply efficient effort by relaxing uninvolved parts of the body. Pay close attention to symmetry between left and right sensations, as imbalance is indicative of a current or impending issue. Finally, use your deep strength to stabilize the joints, supporting slow controlled movement and avoiding pain. The beauty of nerve glides is that they are used both to identify and correct issues. Explore small movements that aggravate, reduce, or have no effect on your sensation, typically by moving joints on either side of the sensed tension. When you identify the position and movements that produce undesirable tension, you can move in and out of them consistently 20 to 30 times through the course of a day to improve your ability to get into the position over time. As your problem areas improve, periodically evaluate for new issues and new boundaries. Here we apply the said principle to change your body by specific adaptation to impose demands. The body gets better at doing what you ask it to do. Stuck tissue might release or tissue might remodel to adapt to your new demands. Pamper is an enjoyable and effective way to improve movement quality. If you are constantly tight, sore, or injured, you may want to pamper yourself. Are you ready to learn more? Then check out the links below or some of our other videos. Thanks for watching.